Hello and welcome to Literary Merit, the show where we tell you what media has value. Spoiler alert, it's all of it. Also, spoiler alert, we will be discussing spoilers as usual, so here is your warning. I'm Ashley. And I'm Alex. And let's start with asking, what is new to you, Alex? I just got finished, like literally just got finished uh, getting my hair dyed. I know! What did you do? Well, it was less of dyeing it and more of two rounds of bleach Ooh. and a toner. But it was like a... But once... I don't know. I, I was going for like a so silver grayish kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it ended up a little more like uh, slightly gray white, which I'm fine with. Okay, um, yeah. No, that sounds cool. And she said it could... Because it's so light right now, it could literally take any color. So if I get bored with it... <laughs> I can change <laughs> it up. Go grab some manic panic and go to town. <laughs> Basically, I mean, I have some in, under my cabinet, but I don't know if I want to go that color. I might go like more of a pewter color. Oh, that could be interesting. If I can find that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I that's I had fun uh, gabbing with my with my hairstylist for two hours. It took. Yeah, it did take you a little while. <laughs> we were talking before you went. That, I mean, like, yeah, when you're doing something that intense to your hair, it's gonna take a while. But a yeah, I'm time. just so I'm I'm so glad I decided to go to her because I tried to make it sort of this light uh, to basically get the yellow out once you bleach it by myself, and I just couldn't do it. And she she was like, yeah. yeah, if if you need to go that light, you really shouldn't do two rounds of bleach at home because she she had a special um, system she did. Uh, mm. to make it so my hair wouldn't fall out, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, uh, that's something pretty intense. Uh, do you have purple shampoo? Yes, actually, she gave me some. Because uh -huh. she's like, I have this, and none of my, because she, she mostly, um, has women as clients, and she's like, yeah, they don't really like the smell of it, it's a bit too masculine, so you can just have it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And it's not like a full bottle or anything, but. I have, well, you've got. A lot less hair than, say, yeah, me. Exactly. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I've got some that I use occasionally. I don't really um, color my hair that often um, or bleach it, but it's just kind of nice to tone a little bit, even still, because I'm, I'm blonde, yeah. but it tends to go a little strawberry, and sometimes oh, I yeah. don't want mm -hmm. that. <laughs> Been up to anything else? Um, not really, just sort of hanging out. The big news was last week, or last time we recorded with the, the book. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Yeah, I've actually been busy. I saw movies these last two weekends, <gasps> which is exciting. Yay. Um, Last weekend, I saw Wonder Woman. Woohoo! Oh, it was good. It was I so, know. so good. I And, and we, we should actually devote a good amount of time to talking to it talking about it um <laughs> i would because i would say i would say it's 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 far from perfect but it's like everything we needed it to be i agree i'm oh and everyone was just so well cast and so charming and lovable i don't know who i have a bigger crush on right now wonder woman or steve trevor's <laughs> like i just don't know <laughs> They're he was good, so and so was so was the assistant. She was great. Mrs. Oh, Etta Candy, Etta Candy. Yeah, <laughs> she is such an interesting character because she actually exists in the comics, or mm -hmm, at least yeah. did at one point. Um, I don't know if they changed her over time, but my uh, exposure to Etta Candy was back when she was uh, during, I believe, the forties or fifties, Wonder Woman's sidekick. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and she was a really embarrassing character. Because basically her entire role was just to be the, like, dumb, chubby foil to the super cool and beautiful Wonder Woman. And so that's yeah. no good. That's not, <laughs> but that's I not almost, a thing. But I, I almost see it as, like, a total reclaimable character. Mm -hmm. Like, she could totally be, like, the, I don't know, chubby power... Like, and she was just a total sweetheart, and, like, she was never, like, the butt of a joke in that way at no, all. No, she had some of the best jokes. Yeah, she was really, really great and cool. Like, there was, yeah, no, she was awesome, and it was it was great to see that character. Her, uh, her sort of catchphrase uh, back in the day was, woo-woo. 
<laughs> and it was the dumbest <laughs> thing ever. And she used to wear a little getup exactly like Wonder Woman, but mm-hmm. it, it was not good. <laughs> it was not good. But that movie, that movie yeah, was real good. I didn't... So the thing I would say that I didn't really like about it is how much of a... How visually it was DC. Yeah, I mean, it, like, I think it definitely until, like, took climax. a... A more colorful tack than, say, yes, Batman v sure. Superman or for Man sure. of Steel. But by the end of it, that the last fight scene was a bit too uh, Batman versus <laughs> Superman for me. That last you know, fight it was scene like, was just a bit too much. It, it was too big, too gray. It was um, a little silly. <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit silly. Um, yeah. No, the best fight scene was. Um, when she's trying to reclaim that town and she's in the that building so and she's just wrecking everyone. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just couldn't contain myself during that scene. <laughs> it was so, so, so good. And I love seeing Chris Pine in a comedic role. Yeah, he's done a couple, but they've never been like... Yeah, they've never been well, quite my favorite. as big as this. Yeah, my favorite performance he's ever done was on the um, Netflix uh, Wet Hot American Summer TV series. Which role did he play in that again? He was the washed up rock star guy. Oh, right, 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 right. And yeah. he was so funny. He was did so, you hear they're doing so a, funny. They're going to continue that show? Are they? Yeah, it's uh, Wet Hot American. Um, oh, I don't know. But it, it's jump, it jumps forward to like current times. That's or, or interesting. Like, or like the 2000s or something like that. Interesting. Well, I'm I look forward to that. I love what Hot American Summer, but to people who uh for people who watch the series, we already know Chris Pine ain't coming back. <laughs> 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 no coming back from that. Not not that guy. <laughs> uh but no, he's so funny. He's so 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 funny. And I I you know, I really want to see him in roles more like that and less like jack ryan because he's he really can do so much more than that people he's just got that face and so people are like well and "Ah, we we saw a little bit of it for sure in some of the star trek movies um yeah definitely it's got that fun campy flavor yeah the first one more so because the the second two he had a very serious tone Mm -hmm. um you know that's what dying will do to you um (laughs) Yeah, I, I think he just totally shines in comedy. He did this during the uh, last presidential election. He <laughs> he was in this hilarious video um, just basically saying like, hey, so you know how much you hate Trump and how he's going to be the worst? Just vote. Just vote. And then he can't do those things. Of course, it didn't end up working. But mm-hmm. he, Chris Pine plays this character who's like the CEO of a company. And uh-huh. he's just like the biggest, most hilarious man child. It's the funniest oh, thing. I remember I've... that one. I did see that. He's so flipping funny. Just like <laughs> stomping around and just being the biggest baby on earth. I saw that mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, okay, there's a new funny Chris in town. Like, <laughs> <laughs> look out, Chris Pratt. He's gonna yeah. for you. <laughs> there, there, there are too many funny, sexy Chris's. Too many great Chris's. Too many. <laughs> oh, and another oh funny thing he said. He, uh, it was he was. They were asking him in an interview. Um, kiss, marry, or kill. Wink. Um, uh-huh. Of the the other Chris's, and oh, he yeah? was like, I could kiss them all. I could marry them all. Kill them. <laughs> Take their money, take their homes. <laughs> I couldn't take it. It was, <laughs> yeah. No, I loved Wonder Woman. I just every second of that movie. It was so refreshing. And she, she is so good at everything she did. <laughs> She's so good at everything in the world. And I and... think I heard somewhere that her last name is pronounced Godot. Yeah, it's not, she's not French. I think she's, um, Israeli? I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I had thought it was Godot because that's, you know. Right, because that's what we assume, especially as film viewers, like, we assume French. Yeah. (laughs) But, yeah, it is with a hard T. I don't know if it's Godot or Godot, but it's... Yeah, it's one of those. Yeah. She's incredible. She's so so fantastic. 
and so I wonder, pretty. I want her in every role. She was even so when pretty. she's like, even when it's in like the the present in the movie, and she's like at the Louvre. Of course, she works at the Louvre. Like, of course, <laughs> she's too incredible. Even just like staring at a picture, she's just like, okay, you're perfect. <laughs> And, you know, I gotta say, I was a little apprehensive when I first saw her, when they had first cast her back, back, back when they were making yeah. Batman vs. Superman. I, I was a little, I was like, she's a little slim. I, I don't know. I like my Wonder Woman to be like kind of a Muscly. beefcake, you know? I yeah. like a, I like a real Amazon look for Wonder Woman. Yeah. You know, she's, she's like that often in the comics, and that's just sort of my visual preference. And so when I saw her, I was like, well... Yep, she's an ethnically ambiguous brunette who's very, very pretty, like, fair enough. Uh, but just mm-hmm. seeing her in action, like, she, her her performance is where she really, really shines. Like, it's incredible. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, super I'm... physical, super emotional at the same time, like, yeah, stunning. I, I, I really look forward to seeing more from her. And uh, I mean, I obviously she's going to get a ton more roles, but, like, I just want to see her in every role. Yeah, for real, like, I was kind of on the fence about Justice League, but I'll see it just for her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd say the rest of the cast. I, yeah, is, no, between her and Ezra too. Miller, I... <laughs> right, I know, I know. They're gonna, I hope they have a lot of fun. Just those two. <laughs> yeah. That would be a great movie, just like a buddy, a buddy movie with <laughs> Wonder Woman and Flash. The odd, oh, that's an odd pairing, I gotta say. Like, you don't normally see those two together, really. Exactly, Yeah. <laughs> But they're and both just so precious. Great. They're I know. cutie pies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I loved it when she was like, a baby! <laughs> <laughs> well, because she's never seen a baby. <laughs> yeah, she's the only baby. She was the only baby. <laughs> <laughs> she's so excited. Yeah, no, just, and all all of the action beats, I mean, except for, you know, a little bit there at the end when it just sort of turned into all the other yeah. superhero yeah. movies. Like, yeah. all the action beats just worked. All the comedy mm-hmm. beats absolutely worked they have such good chemistry they do and i i i don't know i think it was probably the choice of, it was it was probably a, one of the stories from the comics but the choice to make the f- a feature film about world war one instead of world war two <sighs> i think is a really me, brave choice because it makes me so happy yeah like I'm so fascinated by World War One, and it just doesn't. I mean, and I totally get why um, it gets less sort of cinematic attention than World War Two, yeah. because World War Two is so easy because it's got good guys, it's got bad guys, it's like mm-hmm, we know how to tell this story. Yeah. But World War One is just the most insane thing that's ever happened on this planet. Yeah. Well, and and it's it's almost like choosing that as the backdrop for that crazy battle at the end is like, of course. No wonder this battle's so crazy because this war was so crazy. It's the most insane like nothing holds a candle to to what happened in World War One. It's I mean, that's the war that made us say like, okay, maybe we gotta think think about chemical weapons a little bit more before we just do them. <laughs> like yeah. it, maybe there are some atrocities that just should never ever be committed. Yeah. Um, and then we got round two with the atomic bomb, but mm-hmm. <laughs> like just the things that were created, and it, the movie did get into that with um, Doctor Poison and, I loved and her, her stuff. She was I really fascinating. Her. I, I heard a lot of talk about um, having a female vo- villain in a female superhero movie, but she—I don't know. I felt I felt oddly endeared to her. Yeah, like, she was really interesting, and, I mean, she, like, obviously, she was a bad person committing really atrocious yes. deeds, but she wasn't really, like, the villain. Oh, she and was she just had like, her little, like, you could see her heart fluttering when Chris uh, Pine is, like, flirting with <laughs> oh, her. Oh, man. I love it when he turns on the German. <laughs> 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 it was so funny, that scene, just as uh, a side note, when they're in the car trying to get in, and he's, like, mm-hmm. yelling at and his, uh, as, what was his friend's name? Mm. Oh, I'm not sure. Samir? Something like that. I don't also, remember. Also, the supporting I cast, supporting cast uh, was an excellent. Just the multicultural motley crew. I loved it. And they weren't <laughs> like, I felt like they weren't stereotypes either. Yeah, no, they were well-rounded, interesting guys who just came from a lot of different sort of backgrounds. And they were so nice. And they, yeah, they were lovely. They were just, oh, they were so lovely. 
but yeah, I mean, yeah, when she when he's like char- putting on the charm and like she's like, I don't know, I don't have any idea how to yeah, deal with this. Uh-huh. Like she she really <laughs> wanted to believe it, but she was also like absolutely terrified. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I thought yeah, her was... mask was super cool. Oh man, those World War One masks. Yeah, when I saw her, I was like, mm, it's that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in uh, back in college, I took um, this fascinating course, um, Poetics of Peace and War. Oh. It was about mostly about uh, poetry and other art, just sort of peripherally, but mostly poetry mm-hmm. during the World War One era and how. Yeah. World War One sort of influenced art and poetry in particular. Mm-hmm. Uh, you would have found this fascinating. Oh yeah, but... I, it sounds like it was probably more of a lit course than a writing course, which I yeah, I tried it was to... a lit course. I I, I was I definitely uh, stayed more on the whole writing side. But who taught it? Oh, uh, what was his name? He was that. <sighs> he taught. He did teach like low level creative writing. Um, he was he was like a an adjunct. Huh. Hmm. I don't I'm not know. Sure. I always thought he looked a lot like um, Michael C. Hall, <laughs> but I don't oh. remember his name. I took a couple of courses know. from him. Huh. Well, we'll um, maybe later we'll figure it out. Yeah, you might have seen because he did teach creative writing, so you yeah. may have been acquainted. Maybe. But um, anyway, yeah, it was it was about sort of the influence of World War One on the artistic world, um, mm-hmm. and a lot of those sort of you know we talked about Dadaism and all of that, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. futurism. And uh, at the beginning of the course, like the like before the first class, um, he emailed us all and was like, "Okay, you gotta watch this video in order to take this course. This is mm-hmm. gonna be hard to watch, but it's really important that you do in order for you to understand what we're talking about." Yeah. And it was just this slideshow of photographs mm-hmm. from the war. Um, battlefields, fallen soldiers, people who were undergoing surgery for facial reconstruction, which was being pioneered at the time yeah. due to all of the things that were happening to soldiers. And it mm-hmm. was really, really rough. Like yeah, It yeah. was like I've never seen anything else like that. Just the things mm-hmm. that happened during Mm -hmm. that war and so i it was really interesting to see i mean of course they had to sort of sanitize it in certain ways in order to make it palatable as you know a summer blockbuster but they did still sort of put in a few nods to that experience and that reality such as dr poison's face i also enjoyed the moment when after she kills the guy who she thought was Ares, she's like why did it, why isn't everybody why haven't they stopped oh, fighting yeah. and i was like Ugh. and that <laughs> and i think that moment right before that huge battles where you're like oh my goodness like the these germans don't deserve to die either yeah Ugh. i don't know at least i felt that way no absolutely i mean that i mean it's like that is the sort of moral ambiguity of, of World War One. Well, yeah, and, and that was her mission, to stop this big bad guy so people would stop fighting. And it's like, well, that's not really the way it works in real life. Sorry, Diana. Right. <laughs> and, Sorry you actually then... had to fight a Greek god in order to figure that that's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, and, and then, of course... Um, steve's speech to her at that moment when she's like i can't and he's like well i have to yeah like this is my responsibility and you're right like maybe it's not yours but i have to go so i really hope that you want to help me but i i have to do this i don't have a choice oh that was so beautiful it was so good i really like chris pine a lot (laughs) I uh, recently I've determined that he would absolutely be my number one pick to play a live action Nathan Drake. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that would be about, fun. Yeah, we, we've been we've been talking about it, uh, me and Dylan, because uh, we've been playing through Uncharted Four. Mm-hmm. And uh, have you heard they're making an Uncharted film? I think I had heard that. Yeah, but I think it's a flashback. It's like a when he's a young guy yeah. like mm-hmm. when he's like a teen and yeah. i think i heard that tom holland aka well spider-man is yeah. playing 
kid Nathan Drake, and that's a perfect choice, I think, for kid Nathan Drake. For sure. But growed up Nathan, I gotta say. <laughs> Chris Pine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, uh, unless there was anything else you wanted to say about Wonder Woman, um, I think I'm good. I, I, uh, I saw a movie this weekend, Baby Driver. I had heard a lot about that. I don't even think I saw the trailer. Oh my god, it is so good. It is so good. Everyone should see this movie. Uh, it's directed by, uh, directed and written by Edgar Wright. Uh huh. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I love him. I love every movie he's ever made. So. <laughs> yeah, his movies are pretty uh, well loved. Yeah, he's he's a he's a piece of work, man. That guy, he really knows what he's doing. <laughs> um, and so this movie really does have that sort of signature Edgar Wright style, but it's just sort of mm-hmm. dialed down. Oh. It's not quite as slapstick. Not quite as like goofball, you know. Yeah, as mm-hmm. his movies tend to, you know, the the Shaun of the Dead, all those things, they've got a little bit more sort of in your face comedy and and yeah. very stylized mm-hmm. stuff going almost, on. Well, I wouldn't say almost, but uh, almost blatantly parody in a lot of ways. Yeah, too. it's definitely yeah. Some I don't even know what to call it. He's so good though. Uh, <laughs> but Baby Driver, it's it's a little bit more straightforward, a cool. little less. Of whatever that is, um, but <laughs> yeah. it works because it, it's a, it's like a crime movie. Mm-hmm. And oh man, Ansel Elgort plays the lead character, the eponymous baby driver, and <laughs> he, oh my god, like I he's he really blew me away. Wow. Yeah, like I, I didn't really expect much from him. Like I mm-hmm. I liked him in The Fault in Our Stars, but you know he was just like yeah. playing a charming teenage boy. Yeah. <laughs> but this role definitely demanded a lot more from him, and dang, 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 was it good. <laughs> like, wholehearted recommendation to anyone listening, please go see Baby Driver. <laughs> I also just watched uh, that new Netflix movie called Okja. Oh, man, uh, right. It's, it's the same same director uh, that did Snowpiercer. Yes, um, I love another... him. Yeah, he, and it's, I didn't, like, absolutely love every moment of it, but it was fun, and it was nice to see Jake Gyllenhaal as, like, a villain. Oh, really? Is Jake Gyllenhaal, I don't, I don't really know much about it. He's, a, he's like, a very small villain character. He's not the big bad, but, like, he's so, like, just out there. It's very refreshing to see him like this. Hmm. Cool. And then, of course, um, oh gosh, what's her name? She was in Snowpiercer, um... I should never forget her name because she's amazing. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh boy! Well, oh, Tilda Swinton. Thank you. Oh my goodness, she's like my. Icon. I was running through my head like, who's in Snowpiercer? <laughs> oh, he must mean Tilda Swinton. Of course, yeah, because she's such a good villain, and this and this director really loves to utilize her. So, she's fantastic. She is. Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I would I would recommend seeing it. It's fun. It's cute in some places. It's kind of uh, intense in others. Yeah. Oh, uh, let me know if it gets too noisy. Dog and nine year old are downstairs, so hopefully <laughs> so that far, doesn't come. So far, it's been okay. Okay, because I'm hearing a lot of booming and banging, and I'm like, don't please not oh, now. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, it hasn't it hasn't bugged me. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully it doesn't come through. Well, I suppose we ought to get on to our actual topic <laughs> for this episode. So yeah, um, when we last recorded, I, I brought up the idea of us talking about... Well, first of all, we started exchanging favorite web series. <laughs> yeah. And then we're like, well, why don't we talk about them? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, in particular, um, queer web series, which we've noticed is a bit of a trend in web series there's <laughs> at least at least ones that i pay attention to because well, but, uh, that's like what i'm always drawn to <laughs> but I, I do think that there is something to that that you know there are these queer stories that you know people want to tell and so they just go out there and they tell them themselves because well yeah because tv's know, not gonna tv's not gonna them, do that you know 
Yeah, so they, they yeah. just take it upon themselves to do it, and they get to do it the way they want to. Um, so we each recommended to the other our uh, sort of maybe our favorite queer web series, mm-hmm. and so we both watched the other's recommendation. Uh, I recommended The Feels, which is created and by Tim Manley. So many feels. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of feels. So Tim Manley, he um, he's... He was at one point known for his blog, um, Fairy Tales for 20-somethings, which mm-hmm. was turned into a book, and it's just really sweet stuff. He's so, I don't know, he's so uh, adorable. <laughs> he really is. He's just a sweet boy with a lot of feelings. Um, I guess to summarize for anyone who hasn't seen the feels, uh, it's a s- series of very many uh, tiny episodes each episode yeah, def- yeah. tends to be between like one and four minutes, yep. and it's just about this bisexual guy just living his life and having feelings and just little moments in his life and in his day and in his thoughts, and it just and, really gets you. Yeah, and season two I noticed has which which just premiered this this past month of, of June. Um, he did an episode a day, mm-hmm. um, but it was a lot more centered on other characters besides the character he's made for himself. Yeah, telling telling the stories of other people, other yeah. identities. Yeah, or like it, a lot of it's like having a, having a conversation, um, mm-hmm. which was really yeah, cool. The first one was very, the first season's very introspective. Yes, for sure. It's sort of about his coping with his feelings and his life and feeling sort of weird and like he yeah. doesn't belong and he doesn't know how to get by Mm-hmm. And the second season is very much empathy based. Like, I don't. I, it's like a countless number of new characters that they're only there for probably a minute and a half, but they tell their story, and you're sitting there listening to them. And he's most of the time he's sitting there listening to them as well. And it's just, it's kind of overwhelming actually to watch them, even though they're so brief. Yeah, yeah they're just so sort of true. Yes. And there are some fun ones mixed in, and I think those are my favorite just because, I, I don't know. I, They're entertaining. I like stuff. They're entertaining. Like, my favorite one is the one I posted on your on your Facebook. Is yeah. It's from the first season, and he's just <laughs> teaching this student who's, like, not able to focus. And so he just puts on this, like, giant paper-folded hat that has a uh, the Game of Life spinner on it, and it just cuts to it, and it's suddenly spinning, and I could not help but crack up. It's so funny. Yeah, he's he's like, oh, I don't, I don't know what to what to write my essay about. I just, I've been trying all the brainstorming methods, and I just can't come up with anything. And uh, Charlie, <laughs> he's like, the, how about this one? <laughs> I got here. This is one one more thing we can try. <laughs> this is hat. He's like, and, no, and, and nothing. I think the way that it was cut too, it wasn't like we didn't see him spin the the spinner. It just cut just... immediately to it spinning like crazy. And I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah, it's very cute. One of my favorite episodes is um, in season one, Moms, where he's yeah. just chatting mm-hmm. with his friend about how silly their moms are. And it's just so cute and true because it's like, moms are very silly. You're right. I like, everyone the... just has that, like, the stories <laughs> they can tell about their mom and how ridiculous she is. In the second season, there's one about dads. I didn't, I haven't watched that one yet, but it's funny that there's, like, a nice little parallel. Yeah, I haven't watched it either. Uh, but yeah, there are just those great little sort of relatable and funny moments. One that I really like it was it was one that you had uh, initially really enjoyed when I, when you were first watching it was the um, consensus episode where he's like mm-hmm. Jonathan Franzen and his friend is like, oh yeah, <laughs> I <laughs> was oh my goodness, that was so good. Another it's, thing it's... I really like is he he's he he's a student of literature, so he has a lot of literary jokes. Mm-hmm. And so I don't well, know, he's not I, just a student of literature; he's a well, he's yes, a teacher yes. of literature. But I meant like in the grander scheme of things. Yeah, <laughs> a lifelong <laughs> student of literature, and yeah. a temporal teacher of. Actually, I don't think he's a teacher any longer, but he was a high school teacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's really interesting too that he. It's this is definitely um, largely autobiographical, at least in spirit. Yeah. But mm-hmm. the character is not himself because his name is no, Tim, and yeah. the character's name is Charlie. Yes. And one of the things 
that I found really, really different for this series as opposed to other series that I saw. This one's very, um, I would say very much like a play. Each episode's like a little play. Hmm. How do you mean? Because, because there's a lot of monologues. A lot of episodes <laughs> are just either him or another character speaking to themselves or to, the, to an audience. Mm-hmm. Um, True. A lot of sort of soliloquy and like... Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. It just... Because they're so short, that's all I can sort of see them as. It's just these little vignettes of somebody performing for just an audience of one. And yeah, it's um a lot of the sort of more introspective episodes are almost like diary entries. For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love the one, the oversharing one, where he's like telling the story about like this guy that he was like trying to hook up with, and then he like chickened out about it. And he's like, "So I guess it's, it wasn't that I was secretly gay. I'm just even more awkward than I thought." And then he yeah. tells about this girl he was trying not to get too emotionally involved with, and then she ended up just thinking he was a big jerk. And yeah. then it, like, pulls back, and he's just sitting on this fire escape with these two people, and he's just, like, got this captive audience that's really, really awkward, and he's just, like, sitting there, tell- like, spilling his guts to these people who don't know how to respond at all. <laughs> <laughs> this is really cute. I'm just being like, oh, anyway, I've been talking for a long time. What's up with you guys? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just thought they- it was... And I think his format for releasing them one a day is very, like, shareable. Yeah. You know, you, they're you just can so watch short. one and be like, oh my goodness, that was so cute. Let me share it with, like, ten of my friends or, you know. Post it on my Twitter or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And and that, and that nobody has to devote too much time of, the, of their day. They can just yeah, watch it Yeah, two minutes. Or, yeah. <laughs> and I, I feel, I feel, that, that's one of the reasons why I, I write short fiction is because I feel like some, you know, it, sometimes it's nice to just sit down for a couple minutes and read something a little short. Yeah, it's it's definitely easier to sort of make that commitment. And I th- and also the episodes are very self-contained. They don't usually have like a an interconnected storyline for the most part. Very, yeah, there are, um, there are some some references here and there to yeah. previous episodes, but they're incidental. Like when the one where he's talking to his mom on the back patio, and she's wearing the zebra onesie that oh he goodness. mentions in the mom's that. house. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. It's just a nice mm-hmm. little callback, and it's not important that you have seen that other episode because she's yeah. just wearing her zebra onesie. It's just the thing she mm-hmm. does. <laughs> yeah, it's a really really sweet show. I knew you would like it because it's just good wholesome fun i mean it's funny that to call it that because he definitely does talk about like sexual relationships and stuff yeah. but it's always in just sort of a an honest sort of it's never like lewd it's just true yeah I, i'm suddenly rem- feeling like he reminds me of somebody but i, I cannot under i can't think who maybe it'll come to me huh. but yeah yeah just just to sort of like the way he sort of speaks about his own experience just reminding me of somebody i don't know Hmm. Uh, but i do think that it makes kind of an interesting contrast to the show that you recommended to me if you want to yeah so i recommended a show to you that i've been obsessed with since i discovered it i don't remember when i discovered it um it's called the outs it was created by adam goldman written by adam goldman and his uh, basically best friend, as I assume they are, um, and <laughs> uh, co-star Sasha Winters. Um, and it's, oh, it makes me so happy all the time. I watch it, I watch it constantly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to give sort of a summary of the concept? Yeah, so basically it follows the post-breakup of Mitchell and Jack, um, who we at first, the first thing we see of them is they absolutely despise each other, <laughs> just like completely like you're garbage. And I he's a scum of the I, earth, by the way. Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, and then we sort of see them deal with their own lives separately, and then sort of come to understand their lives, how they could still be like in each other's lives and heal. I would say by yeah. the end. Sort of the other was maybe more of a surrogate for their own problems with themselves. Yeah, they definitely um, learned too much about themselves through each other. 
<laughs> yeah. And and I don't think yeah. they could deal with it, especially Mitchell. <laughs> yeah, he was he's bad at dealing with anything. I uh, I have to admit, it took me a few episodes to kind of get into it. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, I was just having a little bit tr- of trouble following because there is some sort of time jumping going yes. on. And mm-hmm. I was like, wait, yeah. when? Who? What? Who was this again? What do they have to do <laughs> with each other? Um, yeah. But mostly, I think it was because when it starts out... They're living lives that are just so far outside of my personal scope of experience that I Mm -hmm. didn't know how to connect to them at first. You know, they're living this sort of single 20-somethings life in New York. And I'm like, "Mm, nope. Like, (laughs) I don't know that experience at all. And it took a little bit to really get into their – because once it sort of came around to them – and their sort of real personal yeah. feelings it, uh, and issues, that's when yeah, it becomes the, relatable. The, the first couple episodes, it's very much, okay, they're pissed at each other, and then, like, these two are really funny. Like, <laughs> Yeah. But then when, and, once you start to see the vulnerabilities... that Yeah, that's... Because honestly, like, yeah, I, I found them really unrelatable at first. Uh, you know, of course, once you get into their, like, truths, then it's like, oh, of course, because this is a universal experience. Like, this is just being a human, and I, I can connect and understand you through that. But they're just, as people, about as far away from my own life experience as one can get and still be a young white person so, <laughs> um, <laughs> living in the United States. Uh, and I, I, frankly, especially at first, I found Una to be just really, really unlikable. She... Like, reminds me so much of a former friend of mine it's scary like really the, the yeah the first season of of the show basically we see uh mitchell and her relationship deteriorate because she is unable to sort of show her feelings without without humor well without... And, and she and it causes her to be something of a bully yes for sure and she's but she's it, it, it... You still root for her because she's so damn funny. Eventually I did. But at yeah. first I really didn't. Well, like yeah, I just found don't, her yucky. We we really don't come to really understand her until that Hanukkah uh, episode. Yeah, I mean, and, I, and you know, I started to sort of get what her thing was yeah, when was she there. and Mitchell had that argument in the wine shop. Mm-hmm. Yep. But yeah, I, it, I mean, it was really, really fascinating to sort of see the way that the series ended up being able to draw me in. Um, and and the, I'd say the thing that really marked it was um, Jack and his new boyfriend. Scruffy is the heart of that show. He's the <laughs> biggest angel that ever lived in this world and no one deserves him. <laughs> He's a sweet baby. I know. And he's so adorable. And like that first scene with him and Jack, or I would say the second scene because the first scene they're outside. But when they get back to uh, Scruffy, a.k.a. Paul's apartment, it's just like the most like unexpected turn of events. And it's so quiet and pretty and like, Mm -hmm. just really special and, and nice. Yeah. And, and how that episode ends with them spending the night together but not, like, having sex. And yeah, then the song and they that just plays, cuddle that's... by accident. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. And then and then the song that plays is, like, it, I, it ha, that's what really hooked me, I think, is the, the, the show but then the music really mm-hmm. is able to shine. Yeah, very because, good use. Because you can, with a, with a web series, you can, like, show off musicians – that probably don't get their, their just, like, their, you know. Yeah, well, and you can find, you know, independent artists, somebody who, you know, people wouldn't necessarily ever be exposed to. Yeah, and then they can use that sort of unexpected or less popular music to sort of surprise you and be like, and it can really change the tone of a scene, too. Uh, so I uh, I actually decided to just hunker down and watch through the entire first season of The Outs. Mm-hmm. Um, one night I was just sort of feeling like kind of crummy, like no particular reason, but I think I was just feeling a little introverted and overwhelmed by all the people in the house. 
Yeah. Uh, so I just like set up in my bedroom. I got some incense burning. I I got a cup of tea, actually a pot of tea. Um, <laughs> Will's mom gave me these old teapots. They're like mm-hmm. fa- old family teapots. Oh, and there's cool. this one that I super duper love because it's like just the right size for like three cups of tea. Mm-hmm. And I love it a lot. So I like got myself this pot of tea and just sat down and just like blazed through the whole thing. Which, which is not easy because this the first episode is like... I don't know. I don't remember the length, but it's it's like under twenty minutes. And then by the end of it, I think the the, the uh, Hanukkah special is like forty minutes or something. It's pretty long, yeah. Um, but I was just ready to just <laughs> close myself off and yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, it, but yeah, it was really interesting because it, it did, like I said, take me a bit to sort of like warm up to mm-hmm. them. Um, but I was in sort of the right state of not, mind to just be like into it and just give it a give it a shot and so it was really interesting too i i really enjoyed that experience of being totally disconnected from these characters and by the end of the season really loving them and caring about them Mm -hmm. like understanding them as people because i think that's really what it is is coming to understand especially these two men and sort of how they got to where they are yeah and they definitely don't uh, they definitely don't hold back on giving imperfections to the characters. E- like, oh, they're like Mi- terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell Mitchell is played by the director slash creator slash writer. Yeah. Um, and he's probably, you know, in some ways the worst of them. He's definitely shown in a really unflinching and realistic way. I mean, I don't know, like, Una might be worse just to- by my personal estimation because she's just you know at least mitchell like does care about people he's just so wrapped up in himself that sometimes he's blinded uh Mm -hmm. but una's just like listen i just have a really hard time caring about anybody and i'm just gonna be a really mean person because of it like wow Mm -hmm. okay i mean i guess that is a type of person um (laughs) but yeah mitchell is is um, maybe more impactful because at times he is so good and sweet that when you then see him just be a super crappy guy, it's, it's more significant. Yeah. I think this is totally off topic, but my favorite like small character is his office pal. Oh my gosh. Yeah. His boss. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to look for his, his name on the, on the list. Yeah, I, um, I can't remember. Mm-hmm. But he's so funny. He's so funny. Oh my goodness. Like, <laughs> when he's like making fun of that other person at their office and he's like, she's, she's stupid and I hate her. And, and then he's like, can you make me some copies? Yeah. Dana? Dana? Yeah. <laughs> I need some help, somebody. <laughs> right. He's <laughs> such a, what a, like, bright star of a character yeah he's just so fun and interesting and funny like you don't get a lot of him but you really get a a feel for who he is oh yeah for sure (laughs) (laughs) yeah oh my god and the damn uh cameo of uh alan cumming as himself (laughs) that was too funny that and was how too, Una too, just, too, like, too funny. Does not know who he really is. Yeah, she's so <laughs> dumb. Ugh, yeah, that's just another reason Una's the worst. She's the worst. Yeah, no, and he's like trying so hard to like be a part of the conversation and like get in there, and she's just like, "Shut up, Alan." Well, and I, I just love that. I just love that. Like he, he's dating her ex, and it's yeah. like what. It's so from like it's you know she's like trying to like really confront Andy and like how crappy he is and she's like I've slept with half of the terrible men in Brooklyn and Alan Cummings like I've slept with the other half <laughs> and, just, and she's like shut up <laughs> you're not a part of this Alan. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really cute and funny. I I very much enjoyed that that moment. Mm-hmm. Um and you know that that scene did make me 
care about Una to a degree. Well, yeah, um, because yeah, like she definitely back. Yeah, and she. I mean, obviously, she was seriously mistreated. Like this guy was a bad, bad, toxic person. Oh, just a real he was crap fest. The horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Walking like like. All but one scene that he's in, he's in his underwear. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just he, every single time he appears, he's in his underwear. Jesus. Uh, yeah. No, he's a bad, bad, bad person. Um, and God, because you know the whole series, you're just sort of wondering what happened. Like you, you sort of end up gathering that Jack cheated on Mitchell, but you don't mm-hmm. really know how they got there, what happened. Um, and so to finally see that scene like they don't get around to it until like right there at the end of the first season and it, it makes so much sense yeah like it's like yeah that was a really big mistake but maybe he but maybe was, it was for sort the of best. trying to explode things so that there was no yeah. coming back and i love the way they word that with explode mm-hmm. where jack's just like you know what it's not working so let's just fuck it up yeah it's like that's like we're stuck in this toxic cycle where neither of them was willing to leave so he did this thing so that there was no going back yeah he took he he fell on the sword yeah he did and then he's a total martyr about it like yeah he, i mean he's absolutely like yeah no i he's like this is exactly what it looks like and i yeah and i did this and i'm shitty and it's my fault and i deserve everything that you're throwing at me like you hate me he, right good i did this terrible terrible thing and una hates him too but he did it for her too because Andy yeah. was horrible it was the only way for him to expose andy truthfully like you know there there could have been some ambiguity if he'd been like hey so andy hit awful. on me like he tried to yeah. He tried to sleep with me. Like she might not have believed him because For sure, yeah. she was that wrapped up in him. Mm-hmm. So he just had to prove it. <laughs> and of course, it's like oh. it was terrible because like he really seriously hurt Mitchell, but yeah. he didn't know what else to do. Yeah, it's very think, interesting and complicated. I think your viewing experience is probably the optimum viewing experience because if you think about, I think it's the second episode where we see what Jack's day job is. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could remember how he words it, but it's like, um, oh, it's he, it's so beautiful. But basically he um, takes people home from getting their wisdom teeth removed that don't have anybody to take them. <laughs> yeah. Wh- oh, gosh. Something like maxillofacial escort or something like that yeah it's an axillary facial escort i believe that is what it is and then yeah. when when he takes the girl back they start watching pretty woman yeah <laughs> and she's just like covered in pillows like it's just totally uh, stoned out of her head her mouth, stoned out of her head <laughs> and, yeah and he like has this whole speech about like who pretty woman is and why she does what she does and it's this fantastic metaphor for his own sort of mistakes and then he's like oh crap you've seen this movie before right and she's just like passed out (laughs) yeah but i uh i see it as being a very interesting sort of juxtaposition to the feels in the sort of one series you know the outs is sort of about these closed off mean people just like trying to come to terms with their mistakes and maybe becoming mm-hmm. better yeah uh whereas the feels is just about this soft soft boy who doesn't know how to live in the world <laughs> like <laughs> yeah so he's just gonna tell he's just gonna tell you everything about himself and, and hopefully maybe he can figure himself out in the process yeah yeah they're very different <laughs> but i felt they're very uh, they're both the feels is definitely a lot more positive <laughs> <laughs> yes but i think he's the sweet. outs the outs definitely leaves you feeling very warm by the end. Yeah, it, it is. It's a bit bittersweet. Um, yeah. But yeah, for sure. you really are proud of them by the end. Mm-hmm. And that's also, what it... in in the the um, the Hanukkah special when we first see Una return after because they had a break <laughs> between the anyway, and she's just like <laughs> sleeping with these two guys, and she's like, and they're like, did we all? Like, and she's like, uh huh. <laughs> 
<laughs> and she's like treating them like total shit and you're like she's not a good person but she is just such a badass <laughs> yeah i gotta say yeah like of all of her like being mean scenes like that one is one that i enjoyed like i mean obviously those guys didn't necessarily deserve just to be like absolutely shamed in the way that she did that it's just like well, wow you're just she... cold <laughs> she's like he's like do you want to go out again she's like i guess you could go out or something like i don't know yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, and oh, he and was then, like, can I get your number? And she's like, well, I mean, you, you could. You could like, my it. phone's My phone's right over there. It probably wouldn't be that hard to. <laughs> and then once he leaves and the other guy's like, hey, do you want to, do you want to, I, I like that. Did you, do you want to go again? She's like, oh. And she's like, totally feigns being absolutely Yeah, she's like, I think I, I think I love you. I... <laughs> <laughs> she's so mean. Um, but yeah, I mean, at least in that case, it's like. I don't know, she she wasn't, she didn't owe them any friendship. Whereas, like, when she's mean to Mitchell, it's just like, yeah. God, you're just, like, a mean, mean person and super yeah. selfish and rude. Like, he's trying to have a friend, and you're, like, his only, like, real friend, and you're not a real friend. And we sort of see, like, hints at her past that might have made her this way. Like, um, in, I think the episode's actually called Whiskey Dick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where she's just yeah. having a conversation in a bathroom with her ex and he's just drinking in the bathtub. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, she's a I mean she's clearly a very complicated character and I I have not watched season 2 at this season point. Season 2 is really different. Is um it? Yeah, um they're they're friends again, spoiler. I mean you find oh. that out pretty quick. Um but I mean, well, they wanted the to same be. character. Yeah, exactly. It left you hopeful at the end of the first season. Yeah. Um, but it's just very different because they had a different budget and like some different crew. Um, I would say it's oddly way more sad. The second season is way more sad. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because like, I don't know. It just it got it gets dark really quickly and like not in the same. It. I don't obsess over it the same as I, I obsess over the first season, but it's definitely worth watching. Yeah, I, I probably will. Um, I just, you know, felt like I binged through that first season and should, like, process it yeah. before well, and, like trying to cram I, the second one in, too, for this episode, you know? Yeah, the, the, they're so different, too, so I think it's really good to focus on the first. And I I watch the first season probably every couple months because I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, I, I love I the would running be gag with the cardigan. yeah. Yeah, his ugly cardigan. I would be interested, definitely, to go back and watch those first few episodes at least again um, to see how I feel about them now that I'm already yeah. on board with the characters. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and it's because... also one of those shows where it's like there's so many jokes so quickly, um, you might yeah. not get them all. So it's, it's sort of like 30 Rock in that way. Like you watch it again, you're like, oh my goodness, there's so much more. This just <laughs> never stops. Yeah, um, but yeah, I'd say, I'd say that The Outs is just the story of two people who managed to bring out the worst in each other. Yeah. And it's, yeah, <laughs> it's really sad. At least, you know, in a relationship, like, once they're friends, then they can just sort of, like, chill out, but when they're, right. when they're romantic, they just, like, just do terrible things to each other and they can't help it well, yeah and that, that whole post breakup is such like everybody knows what that feeling is like <laughs> but you know most sitcoms it's like the main characters aren't haven't just broken up you know <laughs> yeah that's it's an interesting premise uh yeah and it is really interesting how it really turns around your feelings on jack because at first you just see him as this gross toxic like unhealthy person but really then, he's just so sweet and adorable and like cuddly is. and, and he nice. is a total sweetheart um and he's just like continuing to blow up his life like he did this one thing and now he just can't stop yeah doing that thing <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh and he just needs somebody good to like make him feel like he's good i know and that's scruffy <laughs> he's so good he's the goodest boy he's also like really um really good at giving the hard truths too yeah he's because, got this because, sort of interesting wisdom yeah because there's like um the scene where jack's about to break up with him because he can't handle it yeah and he's like no you're not 
Shut up. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're just being stupid. You're just doing a stupid thing. Yeah, you're overreacting. And then, and there's also another scene, uh, I think it's probably in the Hanukkah special, um, where it's like Mitchell, Jack, Scruffy, and I think there's probably another friend there. Um, and they're like at a diner and he's... Yeah, no, it's the... um, it's Mitchell's new boyfriend. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and... I think it's Mitchell telling the story about how a guy at Whole Foods called him a faggot. And, 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 Scruffy, and Scruffy's like, you should have like, stood up for yourself. You should have, like, knocked him on his ass. Yeah, you should have done something. like Which totally calls to. back to the scene uh, where Jack and Scruffy first meet. Where he's like, yeah, these two guys, like, were being rude to me and my date. And then, like, the whole motorcycle thing. and yeah. Yeah, like, oh have, man, that he doesn't, have, like a... he, doesn't, he doesn't have patience for it, because he's, you know, he's already lived so much in, in such a short time that he's like, fuck him. Yeah, but he's still so good. Like, it didn't make him hard, it just made him strong. Right? That's such a great <laughs> way to put it, he's so strong. He is, He's just the most confident, true guy, like, he's just like, yeah, this is where I am, and this is what I believe. And this and... is what I need from you. Ah. Uh... And this is what you need from me. <laughs> yeah, because he know he know he can see he can see yeah. w- who Jack really is. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's really 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 sweet. The two of them are just the most darling. I know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, do you have any thoughts on like sort of queer web series in general? Well, I think. I, I think we touched on it a little bit when we were uh, outlining what we were talking about today where, you know, this this sort of online space is sort of the only place where queer stuff um, can thrive. I mean, obviously, there there are shows that make it through to the, the general population that are queer, especially mm-hmm. more so now that we have streaming uh, stations. Yes. Uh, like Netflix and Hulu and yeah, all that. Yeah, a broader and, and sort of range of things is being produced because it's a lower risk. Yeah. And um, and and so it's sort of just this, like, fertile bed for people that have a story to tell but might not have somebody who necessarily wants to put their money in it. Yeah, I you know, you bring up, you know, how there are, you know, a few things that make it to, like, mass media that are queer stories but i think the big distinction between that kind of thing and the web series that are being produced right now is that whenever it's something on tv say like the l word or something it's always like sort of the subject is like gayness and it's like this is about gay whereas something like the feels is just like I am a queer person, and I have a whole life. And obviously, my yeah. love life mm-hmm. and my queerness is a big aspect of that. But I'm just a person who's living, and I have a lot of other things to talk about, too. And that's yeah. that's a lot less common, because pretty much always when there's queerness as you know a, an aspect on TV, it's like, this is it. We're distilling it down to queer. And, and they're not always written and directed... And produced by queer people, they in they fact star rarely are. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And I think that sort of brings Wonder Woman into this. Like it was directed by a woman, and that's why you... it was so good. And there was no <laughs> creepy male gaze about it. Mm. Yes, and and these these web series are so good because they're produced by the people they're about. Yes, and they're just telling their own lives and experiences. Yeah, because yeah, because like you know, as much as as the feels is about a bisexual man, there are many episodes where sexuality doesn't enter into the conversation at all. And there are many episodes where it's about um, people of different genders and and different expressions and different uh, sexualities even than him. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's like it, everything. I just love seeing things where it, you know, it's just like, yeah, this character is queer and there are also a lot of other things and so we're not always going to talk about that. And and that kind of takes me back to, um, it reminds me of our conversation about queer comics mm-hmm. and seeing, you know, queer heroes. And it's, you know, the bold Riley, that comic that I just love. She's, you know, she's a woman loving woman. 
and she's also just a lot of other things, and she has other stuff going on, you know? <laughs> like, it comes up sometimes. She's but busy. <laughs> she's got other things to do sometimes. Like, yeah, she likes <laughs> girls a lot, but sometimes there's just no time for that. <laughs> so, uh, and yeah, it's like, yeah, just like anybody. Just like any friggin', you know, characters can be queer without that consuming who they are. Yeah. That's a good way to put all that. Good job. (laughs) (laughs) It's important to tell that story. I think I I also wanted to say something about, oh, no, I think I touched on it. Yeah, the length of them and being easily digestible. Yeah, we did Um, get to that. But also being able to sort of lay down and chew them all up. (laughs) (laughs) Lay down and chew them up. (laughs) (laughs) So if you don't have anything else to sort of say, I do have one more recommendation going forward. Yeah, let's talk about it. So the the show, um, another show that I really love, it's a gay web series. Oh. Um, <laughs> it's called The Fabulous Life of Caleb Gallo. Um, mm. And it's it's uh, made by this comedian who's just really funny. And um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like... He, he, his character is a, trying to be a teacher in, and they all live in LA. He's trying to be a teacher, but all of his friends are trying to be actors. And he's like struggling with, he's in love with this guy who's out of the country and they FaceTime, but he's also like in love with this straight guy who may or may not be super, maybe may or may not be straight completely. And like, <laughs> so he just has to like deal with what he wants and what other people want from him. And it's like turned up to eleven though on the comedy scale. Like it's <laughs> it's like just like a hundred miles an hour. It's hilarious. <laughs> and there's this one character who I'm particularly fond of named Freckle. Aw. Who is basically a non binary character and she is just such a riot. Like oh my goodness. She's like old Hollywood alcoholic um, (laughs) who's like super obsessed with themselves but I don't know she's just hilarious and (laughs) there's this one part where she's just like they they get to her apartment she sits down she's like I think I'm drunk and Caleb's like but you drove us here (laughs) (laughs) all right yeah I definitely want to check that out that sounds hilarious yeah, so that one's really fun, um, and I think it's actually just got picked up for an actual TV show, so I guess that's Ooh. sort of, like, where the lines o- overlap, you know? Yeah, well, keep th- keep an eye out for that, then. That's very interesting. Yeah, and I think that one, it was originally on YouTube, it's also on Vimeo. I would recommend going to Vimeo, uh, because he's had to re-upload a couple episodes on YouTube because of certain songs not being approved, so go to Vimeo, and it's in its purest form. <laughs> Um, there's one that I've been interested to check out. Um, I God, I wish I could, I, I can't remember the name of it and I feel bad. You might know it though. You may have heard of it cause it got pretty big recently. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's based on an old Gothic vampire story about this girl who is probably a vampire and this girl who she probably has lesbian feelings for. It's just this sort of weird proto-lesbian vampire gothic fiction from like the 1800s and so they based this like contemporary web series on it. I haven't heard <laughs> um, that. The, that sounds amazing. The series, I know, I'll have to like put it in the um, show notes or something. I'll have to look it up. It's weird that I can't. The name of the series is the name of the vampire girl character and mm-hmm. it's the same name as the original story. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's sort of updated and they're like in college and they're roommates and <laughs> and it just sounds really funny and interesting and lesbian and vampires. Like, I like all of that. So <laughs> mm-hmm. I've heard good things and it seems really cute and fun um, but I just gosh darn it, can't think of the name right now. Well, now we've got some more homework <laughs> for viewing and for any listeners that might be want to watch something a little fun or yeah definitely uh yeah lots of recommendations in this episode all good things there's there's good stuff out there and you guys should go and watch those good things (laughs) (laughs) 
That does it for today's episode. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to us on YouTube if you absolutely love us and like the video if you just kind of like us. Also follow us on Twitter at LitMeritPod. And thanks to Jonathan Colton for the use of our theme song, Fraud, from his album, Artificial Heart. And as a side note, by the way, he's got a new album out recently called Solid State, and it's super good and cool. It's a really interesting concept album. Um, It's on iTunes. It's on Amazon. Y'all should check it out because it's a good time. Ooh. (laughs) (laughs) Until next time, remember, no No guilty guilty pleasures. pleasures.